Back in 1603, Queen Elizabeth I passed away. She had ruled England for 45 years, was well loved, and provided a sense of stability and security during her reign. Described as neither a good Protestant nor yet resolute papist, she was able to provide a relatively happy medium between the two warring sects. Having no children of her own, though, the throne was open to King James VI of Scotland, who became King James I of England upon her death. England had been at war with Scotland on and off over the years. James's own mother Mary had been beheaded by Elizabeth. Still, many people saw the rise of a new king as being the opportunity for religious reform that they had been waiting for. On his journey south to his English coronation, King James, he was stopped by a delegation of Puritans who presented him with a list of grievances and their proposed reforms. It was signed by over a thousand clergymen, which was 10% of England's clergy at the time, and was subsequently called the Millinery Petition. They addressed things such as banning the use of wedding rings and wearing a cross, but didn't mention anything about a new Bible translation. The new King James called for a meeting at Hampton Court Palace to address the concerns in the millinery petition, which took place in early 1604. The Puritans weren't allowed to attend the first day of the conference, and James largely disregarded most of their requests. In fact, James was happy with the setup of the English church, having been extremely frustrated with the Scottish Presbyterian model. Eventually, Dr. John Reynolds, the lead Puritan voice at the conference, brought up the idea of a Bible translation because those which were allowed in the reign of King Henry VIII and King Edward VI were corrupt and not answerable to the truth of the original. James, who hated the popular Geneva Bible for its anti-royalty message, agreed that a new translation would be for the best. And despite the other outcomes of the conference, the Puritans they were happy because they believed they would have a say in the new translation, perhaps enabling them to bring about some of the reforms that they wished for. The translation of the Bible it didn't begin until 1607. 54 Bible experts, only 48 were recorded as some died before the translation was finished, they all gathered together at Oxford, Westminster and Cambridge to discuss the translation. They came from all levels of religion and had different ideas about the reform that they wanted to see. They had to follow 15 rules for translation, including making no notes in the margins of the Bible and keeping the language accessible to the common people, many of whom were wholly illiterate at the time. The translators were broken into subcommittees, each translator independently translating the same section of the Bible, which he then brought back to the subcommittee. All of the translations were compared, and one was selected to be sent to the General Revising Committee. The Revising Committee then listened to the translation rather than read it. Because much of their audience was illiterate, they wanted the Bible to sound right more than they wanted it to look right. If the translation didn't sound good, the General Committee would debate and revise the passage until it did. Afterwards, they would send the approved passages to a few bishops who would then send the passages on to the Archbishop of Canterbury, who would send it to King James, who had the final say in the approval of the new translation. The new translation was finally completed in 1610, but didn't become available to the public until the following year. It was printed by Robert Barker, King James's personally appointed printer. Unfortunately, the new translation had been so anticipated that Barker rushed to the printer and many mistakes were made. Barker had paid £3,500 for the rights to publish the Bible and spent even more trying to fix mistakes and fend off pirating publishers. By 1635, he was in debt as prison, where he'd later die. Aside from printing two different versions of the Bible at the same time and allowing their pages to get bound up together rather than separately, major typos were also discovered in the 1631 printing, which later became known as the Wicked Bible. Among other discrepancies, God's greatness was misprinted as God's great ass, and the word not was left out of the commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. Because of this, it isn't exactly a mystery as to why the King James Version was not very popular from the very beginning. Over time, the King James Bible underwent a number of revisions from the original translation. Typos were corrected, new chapter summaries were included, and marginal references were added and verified for accuracy. The revisions opened the door to increasing the King James Version's popularity, and the rest, as they say, is history. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for something else to check out right now, why not check out a podcast they do? It's called The Biographics Podcast. If you search Biographics in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find that. And as always, thank you for watching.